One more thing I want to mention about endocrine glands is what stimulates them to respond in the first place. I mean, this is not the first time you've heard this. We, this week, talked about the parathyroid and the pancreas responding to either low calcium or altered blood sugar. So that was was this. We had examples of humoral stimuli, stimuli. Hormones release caused by altered ions. So this is when the endocrine organ is both acting as a sensor and an integrator. So this picture here is showing parathyroid responding to low calcium and initiating by sensing low calcium, initiating a response um, to target those three structures we talked about in res to respond to low calcium. Um, pancreas was another example, response to low blood sugar. Very common way for endocrine organs to respond. And it's the one I wanna focus on this semester because it is that simple, um, it's simple. However, I do want you to just be aware and you'll see it, you could see it, um, that hormones can also be released by two other mechanisms. So either by neural input, so a neuron telling an endocrine gland, signaling it to release hormone. This happens with the adrenal medulla. So in this case, right, this is more complicated than a, a stimulus response pathway with a single integrator. There are two integrators here, at least. Um, the spinal cord's an integrator deciding whether or not to respond, and so is the adrenal gland. Um, so of course, it's more complicated than I first presented. The third way is a hormone causing another hormone to respond. This is common with the hypothalamic pituitary organ axes. So I love these. Um, the pituitary produces a hormone and then so does this organ. And these are complex signaling pathways that regulate cool stuff. This we'll talk about in the spring but it is another mechanism by which hormones can be produced. So the focus of this series of lectures has been those, those direct regulated variables. But I wanna give you one case where an example of, oh, it's gonna be this, this one. So the pancreas, remember the pancreas, it responds to both high and low blood glucose. Let's take right now the high blood glucose. High blood glucose is going to target the pancreas to release what? Insulin, which then insulin targets tissues to increase glucose uptake and utilization in order to decrease blood glucose. I'll show a picture of this in a moment to remind you. Imagine you eat a large meal. If I tell you that has an effect on the pancreas, what direction do you think that would, what would the pancreas do in response? So let's say it's a big meal, is insulin going to increase or is glucagon going to increase? Well, hopefully it's clear that right, eating a big meal increases blood glucose. So it's gonna be the same effect as that. However, it's another mechanism besides through increased blood glucose. So, in, in response to eating a meal, both these things can happen. I'm gonna show you this. So stimuli for the pancreas, this here is our regulated variable. Here, the stimulus is that it's too high. And this is our um, sensor receptor that then has an output signal to respond by targeting these tissues to increase glucose uptake in use to decrease blood glucose. That's our simple humoral stimulus mediated endocrine feedback loop. I don't care if you know humoral stimulus, let's just call it simple endocrine feedback loop. This is a feedback loop 
loop because we are turning off the system by responding to, by lowering blood glucose. We're regulating a variable. Okay. However, eating a meal can also trigger the same response through an indirect pathway that is a nervous system, a nervous system initiated. So sensory receptors in the digestive tract actually stretch. This is a type of mechanical receptor. I'm not gonna write that because you don't need to know it yet. So this stretch sends a signal to your central nervous system. That's what eventually can make you feel full. But in this case, it's also causing, so here, this is also an integrator that sends information to the pancreas to cause that same output, output then the same pathway. So this is our more complex neural endocrine feedback loop. Still has the same components, but if we were to diagram it, it'd be a little more complicated. I'm not gonna ask you to do it, but you should be able to identify things as like integrators and receptors still. All right, here is a receptor. This is a receptor slash integrator. There's an extra integrator in this system here. Nice to have because your body can start to produce insulin before your blood gl glucose has actually risen. So you can um, to prevent or reduce that increase. Right, so maybe this actually makes more sense as feedback. You're maintaining, you're getting ready to maintain that variable as soon as you've eaten. If you eat something that doesn't have sugar in it though, your insulin is gonna increase and maybe you just took in fats. So um, it's good to have a direct way to control this as well. In both mechanisms, the targets are the same, right? The targets are the organs that are directly altering blood glucose.